hello. All right, so <clears throat> I'd like to share with you a few tips on how to create an environment in your home that helps your children feel really creative or free to express themselves um, or excited to experiment with art. So I, I believe everybody is creative. There's an artist inside all of us just in different forms. And some people are destined to grow up and do a life in the arts, like me, where I'm doing photography, music, uh, painting. And a lot of people, most people, have passions like that in their hobbies. It doesn't have to be your career, but that creativity is in all of us. It's in you as a parent, it's in your child as a child, and it will be in them until they grow up. And um, I work with a lot of adults who feel like at some point in their growing up, something happened that shut down their creativity or made them afraid to create. It made them shy to be heard. Um, they felt pressured to get it right or do it perfectly, like they're gonna get in trouble if they drew outside the lines. Um, and so some people just entirely stop creating. They say, I'm not creative, I'm not an artist, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I hear that a lot. And I also build relationships with those people and help them to learn how to play again and learn how to like tap back into that creativity. Because it's seriously, it's like, um, what is it called? I think in in the vineyards with the, the wine plants, like, have you ever seen that movie? It's called, um, I think, Forever, not Forever Young. What's it called? There's a movie where there's a chocolate, a guy with chocolate, and there's a wine vineyard in California, and the whole vineyard burns down. Walking in the clouds, I think that's what it's called. The whole vineyard burns to the ground, and the family is so sad because they think that they've lost their livelihood and they've lost their land and the the, the grapevines they've been growing for centuries or, de or generations and they dig down into the soil covered in uh, the blackness after a fire you know the soot and they find a little root that's still alive so that is kind of how i think about creativity in adults where whatever's happened to us in childhood and teenagehood and growing up and working in our jobs the whole fire has burned away all of our playfulness and our childlike spirit and our ability to pick up a drum kit and just start hitting it whether or not we know how to play the drums. That seems to burn away, but we can totally go back in and find that little root inside of all of us. Now, if you're raising kids, that means that the whole vineyard is probably still thriving and abundant with green leaves. Um, so. The question is, how do we raise the children and protect the vineyard, not sheltering them, but keeping the plants healthy and growing, and, and we're not the ones that are starting to blaze the fire in their vineyard. So, um, some tips from an adult artist who has done a lot of research on the conditions that help creativity flourish. This is what I want to show you. I do this for myself. You can do this for yourself to help your own creativity grow. And then creating this environment for your child is also a beautiful gift. So one, space. Just space, like having your own space, whether it's a whole room or a desk or a corner. And in that space, you're allowed to do whatever you want. You can make a mess and you can leave the mess. You don't have to clean up after yourself. And nobody else goes in that space. You're giving yourself this gift of freedom. It's so important. Literally, like if you don't have much room, give your child like a, a tray and that is their tray and they can do whatever they want with it. And you don't touch it. You don't go in there and clean it. You don't say, oh, I just made it a little nicer for you. No, not yours. It's theirs. Don't touch it at all. They have to understand that there is something in this world that they get to be in complete control over and uh, they can go there to express themselves, to release all the emotions, because they know that you know if they're mad at you, they can go there and you can't 
come and touch it. If if they have an idea, it's going to be safely received because nobody else is in that space. Um, when I was growing up, my mom gave me a tree. If I sat under the tree, no one else could come in. And I remember that, and I think that's given me that sense of like how important it is to have a space. I also have my own room. Now I have my own studio. So right now we're at my house in my loft in Cap Hill. Um, but almost every single day I, I go down to Soto where I have my art studio and no one comes in there without my permission. So that's one. Um, also number two, time to be bored. There's constantly entertainment with phones, televisions, um, books, conversations, like whatever we're doing, just stuffing our brains full of information. And something really powerful that I keep bringing into my life is times of boredom. I'll go sit in my studio and I'll hang out there for hours and sometimes like won't do anything. I'll just lay around and stretch and I feel myself getting bored and I kind of want to grab for my phone and then I'm like, no, see what your brain comes up with when it isn't fed something. So this, this mass, it's this, this uh, amazing organ that its job is to come up with thoughts. So if you're giving it thoughts constantly, it's like having a conversation with someone and they're constantly talking and you can never get a word in. By stopping the talking, the input of the entertainment and being quiet and letting yourself get bored, now the brain has a chance to give you a fresh idea, a creative idea. Um, so space and that silence, that solitude, that stillness that you feel when you kind of get bored and then that boredom will turn into a new idea and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I want to create this thing. And that enthusiasm comes because you're so tired of being bored <laughs> and now you're suddenly excited to go create something. Um, and then thirdly, understanding the impact that you're having on other people. So when your child creates something, you don't need to tell them what you think about it. You don't need to say, that's really pretty. That drawing's really beautiful. You're really good at drawing. I like that color. It really doesn't matter what you think. And that's actually where a lot of people get their creativity shut down or they're afraid to be an artist is because they start worrying about what other people think. Is this gonna make mom happy? Is she gonna like it? That can last a lifetime. Still wondering at the age of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80, you're like, what would mom think? Ugh. Ooh, we don't wanna think about that. So <laughs> it doesn't help us. What is helpful is understanding the impact, the ripple effect. So if your child shows you a drawing and you say, when I looked at your drawing, it made me think of giraffes. And when I thought of giraffes, it made me have happy feelings. And then I decided I wanted to draw a giraffe. It's a random example. In the same way you could say, oh, when you do that, when you did that drawing, it made me realize I wanted to write a story about giraffes. So I sat down and I wrote this story and you need to go write that little tiny story and read it back to your kid and show them that you inspired me. Because of the thing you just created, it helped me to create something. And I want to give that back to you. And it's teaching them this circle of giving and receiving and how as humans, when we're consuming the art from other people, it's inspiring us to create art in response. And that's why it's so important that we don't shut down or start saying that we're not creative or that we're not artists because we all have the ability to receive and to give, to see what another person has created and then to watch something be created out of us. It's that other person is wanting us to reply. <laughs> um, and that's, I, from my own experience, I definitely feel that. Like if I do a performance on stage and I'm singing and someone says, oh my God, I love your song. You sing so great. Um, I'm like, thank you. But it's really just like a compliment. It doesn't go much deeper. But when someone comes up and says, I love your song so much, it inspired me to start learning guitar. That hits me so deep. And I'm like, oh my God, what I'm doing here is really important. I'm actually inspiring people to take action and do things and it, they're changing their life because of what I'm doing. 
just the same reason I started making music was because I saw someone else do it. I didn't just compliment them, I picked up a guitar. So do that for your children too. See what they're doing and then let them see the impact they're having on you. Space, stillness, quiet, and impact. And see how that changes the creative vibe in your house and how the creativity in your little artist starts to blossom. I hope that helps.